Ah, I'm sorry I made you guys wait a few extra minutes here this morning, but you know how it goes. Sometimes things happen, and <laughs> I'm just glad I'm able to do this morning show. So, um, just had a couple things come up, but nothing major, all good stuff, but that just sometimes makes it a little busy. And as you know, pretty much we meet between 6.30 and 7.30, although usually it's right around 7.00. And so that's why I, I kind of am apologizing a little because it's 7.10. But I'm still within the 6.30 to 7.30 that I believe is in the description, so I'm good. But I try to get here right around 7. I just had a few things kind of delay me. In any case, it's good to be back to our day texts. So I'll try to get right to it because I know some of you may be getting close to um, retiring for the evening. And um, I want to make sure we have some time to go over the material, talk about any thoughts you may have, and also discuss the rest of the week and this weekend show. I hope you enjoyed part four of the Michael and Jesus as the Biblical Archangel. I did. I thought it came out well and at least covered the material in a way that I hope will give people enough material to consider so they understand the issues and they can decide for themselves. That's the main thing. Okay. So now, as you know, with our day texts, we're reading at this time through Revelation. Once we're done, we're going we are going to reset and start with Genesis 1. We started doing these day texts last November, November 2018, in terms of the videos. Before that, I was posting them, but I started doing the videos um, in, the, uh, in the New Testament letters. So we didn't even really cover the... Um, historical accounts of Jesus' life and ministry, you know, the four gospel or great messages. So we have all of that material. We have Genesis, as I mentioned, uh, a lot of the other parts of the books of Moses, books attributed to Moses, and other texts <clears throat> from the Hebrew scriptures, as well as the Greek translation, because I try to do both at the same time when I'm doing those texts. All right, so we're in Revelation in terms of our day text readings. Revelation chapter 12. We've talked about the revelation, you know, in terms of this being something from God, according to the opening of the text, that he gave to Jesus, whom we as Christians believe was resurrected to his right hand. And then Jesus sent forth his angels, <clears throat> who delivered these uh, messages and visions to John, who in turn wrote them down and then directed them to the existing Christians of his time and also, of course, in many cases, speaks of future times or events yet to take place, very much like Daniel, at least in part. <clears throat> All right, so let's get to the reading, Revelation chapter 12. We're going to be reading verses 13 through 17. And you can follow along with me in my translation. If, if you want to, I put it in the description below. Or you're free to use any text you have. <clears throat> if there are any significant differences, you can bring them up. And if we have time and they're relevant, I'll talk about them. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. Let's get to the message. I'm getting my reading voice going. <sighs> okay. Verses 13 through 17. Revelation chapter 12. This is right after Michael the archangel and his angels fought with the dragon and defeated the dragon. The dragon fought back and his angels, but they couldn't win the fight. So the heavens rejoiced when he was thrown out and then they gave a warning to mankind stating that the dragon had come down with great rage, of course, having lost the fight, and knowing he has a little time left. So picking it up right there, <clears throat> verse 13, <clears throat> excuse me, at the time when the dragon recognized it had been thrown into the earth, it chased after the woman, who gave birth to the male child. This birth and woman and male child, they're part of a text of Revelation 12, the first part, that I haven't translated. 
So we skip that in terms of our reading. But before the battle in heaven and the authority of God's Christ, that's what it says, came to pass when Michael and his angels defeated the dragon. Excuse me. Before that happened, there was a vision of a woman who gave birth to a child. And I'm not going to get into the interpretation of things like that, as I said in prior shows. Because I think if you've read the, the New Testament and the Hebrew Scriptures and you have an understanding of biblical Christianity, then a lot of the vision will make sense to you and either be seen as God's heavenly woman in a spiritual sense involving those with him or Israel. Whatever it is that you understand the woman to represent as giving birth to the male child whom we believe represents the Messiah. But again, it's an interpretation. So the male child here does appear to have messianic implications that the devil attempts to reject or, or to defeat, but fails. So once this male child has been born, once the devil fails and is defeated, and the authority of, of the Christ is established, this is what's happening. He realizes he's been defeated. And so the whole purpose of him fighting involved that woman and the male child. The seed, I believe, referenced in Genesis chapter 3, that would crush the serpent. Right? Think of it like Herod the Great, when he was told that the future ruler of Bethlehem's star had been seen. <clears throat> and what did he do? He tried to destroy the child, right? That's like a representation of the things we're seeing here in some way, but bigger, involving the devil. <clears throat> And God's seed, the child, either literally as Jesus, in the sense that we're also talking about with Herod, and potentially in one sense used by the devil as an instance of him trying to kill the child, right? That's what Herod wanted to do, stop the child from becoming this fulfillment that everyone was looking to. And he failed went insane, and died one of the most horrible deaths you can imagine. He was a terrible person. He built a lot of great things. He was a terrible person. That's why Jesus wasn't that impressed when he was shown the buildings and all these things. He was more impressed by the woman who gave all she had in the form of the lowest items of value, not those valuable building things. I'm not saying those aren't nice. We all like nice things. Don't get me wrong. My point is that the ones Jesus was talking about were built by someone who did a lot of wrong, Herod. And while he built the temple, rebuilt it in ways that allowed for the worship of Jah, that's great. He was still a terrible person. And he tried to kill a newborn child. Many, and he did, according to the biblical record. He just didn't kill this one. And neither did the dragon. <clears throat> In verse 14, it says, The two wings of the great eagle were given to the woman so she might fly away into the place where she, where there is no one. Some, some translations will say wilderness or desert. But to me, it just seemed to indicate a place where she's alone. To her region where she's nourished. See, it's, in, it's hard to say exactly who we're dealing with here, right? We have the dragon. We know who he is. We have the male child. We're pretty sure we know who he is. We have the woman. And if we connect that with Genesis, that can either be in a physical or potentially spiritual sense, since Jesus was born in heaven, but also born as a man. Either way, we have these representations. <clears throat> the dragon's been defeated confined to the earth. It's like a prison before prison for him, but better than the ultimate prison he'll get. Still, <clears throat> he knows what he's going to get. 
So he chases after the woman who brought about the things that took place. And it says the two wings of the great eagle were given to the woman so she might fly away to the place where no, where there is no one, to her region where she is nourished. There she remains away from the face of this serpent for a season, seasons, and half a season. I'm not going to get into the interpretation of those things. It's not our focus. I don't believe it's necessary, and I don't believe it would ultimately help us. I think the things I'm kind of referring to are more important than these times and seasons, right? Even Paul said that. We don't need anyone to write us. We just need to know what's going to happen, and when it happens, we'll know. <clears throat> Verse 15, but the serpent poured water out from his mouth after the woman. Okay, <clears throat> so the dragon goes to wage war with the woman and chases after it. Verse 13, the woman's given a place to stay safely and be nourished, be made stronger, you could say. Two wings of the great eagle. I don't know why when I think of that, I, I tend to think of the, the eagle that is part of the image on the Earth's map. So I'm just not sure if there's a sense in which this relates ultimately to a physical country or place on Earth or something else, spiritual. That's why I'm not going to get into it beyond just referencing those options in ways that we can clearly see are involved one or the other because they're spiritual and physical things. Woman, male child, dragon, great eagle, right? What's that? Well, there's an image of a great eagle, it looks like to me, on the earth. But we don't need to force any kind of interpretation like that. The serpent poured out water after the woman, like a river, to try to basically destroy her. So the woman's getting away from the dragon. He's chasing after her, verse 13. The woman's given a place to flee to and get healthy, strong, wherever the great eagle is. And the serpent tries to get her anyway. So she's gotten away. And so he unleashes a means by which he can try to get to her in this safe place. That's his rage and desperation, you could say, <laughs> trying to get to her when and she's already out of the way but the devastation he must have caused to try to get to her it makes me think of the holocaust i don't know why i'm not saying that's what it was but it certainly is a period of great rage by the dragon and if in any way the woman represents israel in a literal sense i mean when you consider the river of devastation that was sent and the attack that was basically made on the earth to try to destabilize even places as far away as North America, which if that is the great eagle, would be where the woman was, was hidden. If the, these things happened up until that time, I'm just looking at events of significance, major significance, and telling you that that's what comes to my mind when I read these texts. But... These could very well be uh, related to other things involving more first century and, and earlier things. But as far as my experience in life and things I've seen and, and recognized or heard about in verifiable ways enough to know, okay, that was a major event. These things happened. What was going on there? I mean, we had so many things happening in World War II that was followed by the establishment of Israel as a nation in a way that I don't know is necessarily related to these texts, but I'm just pointing out to you things of significance. Unusual attacks on humanity or parts of it by beings who seem un very unusual using symbols like the swastika in a way that was very influential, almost spiritually demonic in a sense, and you had... Of course, the Nazis heavily involved in occultism. You had the Vril Society. I mean, they were not in any way Christian. That was an occult society. Well, what would be closer to the devil during a period of his rage than the, than the rising strongest military on the planet 
using a symbol of, from ancient times and showing great rage against the people that gave birth to the male child. Just something to think about, right? We don't enforce, we don't really talk a lot like this at all here because we have faith in Jah and we believe in Jesus as the Messiah and we know the best way to live is to treat us the way we want to be treated. And we leave the rest of these things to Jah to fulfill. We've seen him do it in the past. We see texts like in Daniel that we believe were fulfilled in various ways involving different kings and kingdoms like Alexander and those who followed him. So it's not like we can't make sense of these texts at all. It's just we don't go enforcing a view, right? I mean, I'm not going to go requiring or even promoting what I just talked about, like a way a view people should have. This is, here's how you should interpret these texts. No, 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 only this way. I might offer it again as an opinion like I did, just as something when I read the text I can relate to in terms of recent events on the earth that seem to be at the level we're talking about. <laughs> Things that are described here that match some of the, the odder events related to some of the more significant destructive periods. There's more interesting things about World War II and the period of time involving it as well. But I'll talk about that another time. Let's finish the text. Verse 16, that's when the earth helped the woman. The earth opened its mouth and consumed the river which the dragon poured out of its mouth. Okay, how would I interpret this kind of like World War II? Well, what happened? Well, it looks to me like the, the river the dragon unleashed that was flooding the whole earth militarily, if I were to interpret this, for example, as the Nazis and, and even, of course, Imperial Japan as their ally at that time. These are all nations overseen by spirits, you know. And if this happened after the period of great rage in a way where he was thrown down or at least became active against the woman, if she was hiding in the great eagle with the two wings, it's just an interpretation, North America, and then the earth responded, right? What happened? The, when the United Kingdom was, of course, attacked, they fought back. And then when the United States was attacked, they fought back. When Russia was attacked, it fought back. The earth seems like it came to the aid of the woman who was hiding wherever the great eagle is. And, and that is what happened, right? It sucked up everything that the Nazis unleashed and consumed that river that the dragon sent out. Just an interpretation. Verse 17, Then the dragon became furious at the woman, and he left to bring about war with the rest of the woman's children, seed, the ones who protect the commands of God and who have the testimony of Jesus. And what do we see today? After all of that took place, we see this, and have seen, a continual attack on morality, religion, Christianity. Pretty much right after World War II, you had the use of the um, U.S. money system with the Illuminati, all-seeing eye, and pyramid on the back of the $1 bill. You had the rise of Aleister Crowley I, because of his association with Winston, Winston Churchill and the use of the victory or peace sign, which is really the pan sign, right? It's a sex sign. But that began the rise of the whole Crowley movement. And then people followed him right into the 60s, 70s, and beyond. Even today, it's like a resurgence of that same stuff. And what is it? It's anti-us. It's anti-commands of God. It's anti-testimony of Jesus. Looks to me like that rose up pretty quickly right after the Nazis were defeated. I'm not saying it wasn't in existence because Aleister Crowley was doing all kinds of weird stuff before then, but it started to really be associated with the victory of Britain and the United States. They were using things like uh, pendant dousing. They were accusing each other of using spiritism, right? 
to find the subs and stuff. They're all involved in occultism. The UK, the United States, the Nazis, Russia and Japan, they were their own, they do their own, they're more like self-worshippers, right? <laughs> Dictators and slavers. Killed millions of people. Terrible. Either way, it seems to me like a scenario where these things took place. I'm not saying that's what took place or when these things took place, but do you see what I'm saying? I can identify elements that match these things in ways that I think, well, it may have taken place. But it's not going to change how I act. I'm going to react because of my belief in Jah, because of what I believe about Jesus, and because I believe treating others the way I want to be treated is the right way to be. Now, these things are, are, are significant and important, especially when they're fulfilled, but that's not going to distract me from those three. I'm not going to put more emphasis on my interpretation of the woman and the eagle and all these things involving World War II and take my focus off of Jah, Jesus, and treating others the way I want to be treated. Why would I do that? I would be then giving more. I would be like the Watchtower in their lesser positive moments. I'm trying to be nice, you know. They have good qualities. People try. And there are good people, I'm sure, within them who are really trying. But they're stuck with all this stuff. And that's why I don't want us to get stuck. I'll talk about it. We can talk about it. It's not like we should avoid anything in the Bible because it's interpretive in these ways. We just have to be careful. We can't go treating these kinds of texts the same way we treat the two greatest commandments, right? Love God with your whole heart, soul, and mind. And treat your, you love your neighbors yourself. That's at least in terms of the law. And we know that the one who gave that summary of the law is the one in whom we're to believe as well. We're not to do that. This is just for like if right now and talking about it, it's casual. I make it clear. You've got to be careful. This is, I think, a good way of doing it. Making sure that you don't emphasize your interpretation, even if you give it, so that people are overly excited in a way they don't need to be about these kinds of things. They can get you overly excited. You should be properly motivated and excited even just because of being alive. Knowing Jah is here. Life can only give life to life. Everything shows intelligence. Except sometimes the things we do, right? <laughs> but even then, we know that we're intelligent too. It's just we do things in our view because of the condition we have that's undergoing a test and a judgment. And then, then we go to what's next. So these things are what's going to happen along the way. And we know the clearest part of all this, right, I would say, is verse 17. The dragon became furious at the woman. Okay, not that part. And he left to bring about war with the rest of the woman's children or seed. Who's that? Okay, this is why this is the easiest part. It's interpreted for us. The ones who protect the commands of God and who have the testimony of Jesus. That's you. That's me. That's everybody who recognizes we're all going to the same place unless Jah keeps, keeps us going into that new place. And either way, the best way is the way. Not the wrong way with people who are going the wrong way. But the ones who are trying to protect the right way. And who are telling people the truth. According to the best reasons. And then giving proof. And pointing out we don't have to know everything for sure. Because you don't know everything for sure. You believe them anyway. Even to the point of risking your life every day. And that's all we're doing, is in doing it in a good way, right? Our risk involves protecting the commands of God and of giving witness to the one who said he was the most important one. And then everybody else, and then yourself. And in doing so, he showed that he was one we also need to accept. Because he proved he was the Son of God in our view. So 
we're not doing anything that's really risky. It's not bad. It doesn't involve some weird ritual. It's not like that. No one's stealing. No one's promoting lying. We're all trying to work and earn an honest living. No, that we're just dying, but that we can live if we do the things that, that, that are considered right in God's sight. And when we fail, we ask for forgiveness. What the, All of these things are Christianity. Yet, when you talk to people who do all those things about Christianity, how do they talk about it? Like it's as bad as them. So we have to be careful because there are people who follow the dragon. That's just a fact. We can't help that. But what we can do is help plant and bring God's message and the testimony of Jesus to others. Let them consider it. And if they want to accept it, that's great. If they don't, we move on to the next one and we try to help them and do our best every day to be the best we can. The dragon's going to try to make it hard on us anyway. So let's do our best not to make it harder on ourselves or harder on each other. So to that end, I'm thanking you all to, for joining me today. I like going over these texts, but I, you know, I try to get a little, well, I don't want to, when it comes to interpretive material, I'm just trying to be very careful because I can read it and I do have ideas about it. I'm sure you do too, but it's just not the primary thing that we should be presenting to other people. They won't understand it the way we do. <clears throat> not right away, right? First, they need the commands of God. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Praise God with your whole heart, soul, and mind. Jesus summarized them all right there. That's not hard. If they believe. And then the testimony of Jesus. Right? This is basically saying everything God told him to say. And there's nothing wrong in it. You could point out everything he taught and said. And the way he said it. And people will be drawn to him or not. They're the ones with God and through Jesus. Who will make that decision or not. But our job is to help them along the way. And to stay on the way. And to not let the dragon pull us back or off. So I hope you'll join me tomorrow. Be back tomorrow for another day text. And then I, I should be here the rest of the week for the day text. We'll keep going through Revelation. We'll get into Genesis. There's a lot of good stuff. And then we'll do a, a show this Sunday. CW Jaw Talk 21. We're going to go back to the pre-Christian texts that we have, that are a part of the best available evidence that you can use to show that Jesus is the biblical Messiah.